COVID who? Nah, I'm just kidding. Everyone's talking about that right now, but I want this to be a safe space. So welcome back to my channel, everybody. Welcome to Cupcakes and Stub Muffins TV. So you might be finding yourself at home with a little bit of extra time right now. So why don't we learn a new skill? Why don't we? Today we're going to be talking about all things macarons. No, I did not say that wrong, nor did I spell it incorrectly down below. If you're thinking macaroon, you're thinking about a totally different dessert. A macaroon is that coconutty cluster thing that you get, and a macaron is what we're gonna be creating today. In the world of macarons, we have the Italian macaron and we have the French macaron. And in this video in particular, we're gonna be focused on the Italian macaron. I just find them a little bit more stable. I just like it a lot better. So that's where we're gonna be focused. Plus the Italians need a little bit of love right now. Now a few things before we begin. If you live in a super humid climate, you might need a little bit of extra care making macarons. You might need to go out and get yourself a dehumidifier just to suck some of the wetness out of the air. Otherwise you're gonna be waiting forever for your macaron shells to dry and ain't nobody got time for that. Also, I never recommend making macarons if it is raining outside because again, that's gonna extend the process tenfold. So you may as well just wait until it's sunny, nice, dry outside. Things will go a lot more smoothly, a lot more quickly at everybody's happy. Some equipment that you're definitely gonna need to make macarons would be a mixer. It's gonna make things so much more easy for you. Also, you're gonna need a candy thermometer and you're gonna need a digital scale or an accurate scale because in the world of macarons, preciseness, is preciseness even a word? Precision, huh? I film alone, nobody helped me out with that one. Precision, is like paramount. It's like number one. If you are off just a little bit, no macarons for you. When we get down to oven times and temperatures, I'm gonna give you what I use. However, every oven is different. I've moved a couple times. I've used a couple different ovens in my time as a baker. It's always different. So I'm gonna give you what I use, but I want you to see how your first batch goes and adjust up or down from there. All right guys, let's get to it. Let's get baked, not decorated. We're not doing that this time. Let's start with our dry ingredients. I've got a regular mixing bowl here as well as my sifter on top of my scale. I'm gonna pour in 200 grams of almond flour as well as 190 grams of icing sugar. Then I'm gonna sift it once, 100% all the way making sure my mixture is fine, fine, fine. Then I'm gonna circle back and sift that for a second go around. Next, I'm gonna measure out 165 grams of egg whites. Now I use real eggs and separate them from their yolks and it takes approximately five to six large eggs. I'm also gonna grab a small saucepan and measure out 200 grams of granulated sugar as well as 70 mils of water. You wanna make sure that you account for anything that could kill your meringue. So here I'm just wiping down my mixer as well as my attachment with some lemon juice to kill any grease. Then I'm just adding a quarter teaspoon of meringue powder. It's not necessary, but I just find it helps stabilize things as well as half of my egg white mixture. The other half I'm adding to our dry ingredients. Putting our saucepan on the stove top now, I'm gonna take my candy thermometer and bring the sugar syrup mixture to a boiling point of 237 degrees exactly. When the thermometer reaches 200 degrees, go back over to your mixer, pump that up to full speed. When your egg whites start coming together like so, you can take your 237 degree mixture, slow down your mixer entirely so that the sugar syrup does not splash back out at you and slowly begin to add it. Once it's all in, you can bump your mixer back up to full speed, and then you wanna set a timer for eight minutes. While you're waiting around for those eight minutes, you can take your piping tip. Here I have an 803. The closest Wilton would be a number 12 round tip, and I'm putting that inside of a piping bag. I'm also gonna take my dry mixture mixed with the egg whites and start to mix that together with a spatula so it makes an almond paste. Finally, you can begin to prepare your trays by putting your silpat on top. 
Once our eight minute timer goes off, we can stop our mixer and taking the whisk attachment with the meringue still on it, don't beat it off, beat that straight into your almond paste. Then start to mix that with your spatula to help loosen the mixture. From here, we'll start to add more and more meringue, gently folding it into the almond paste until everything is in the bowl. For your first time making macarons, I would recommend only making one color. However, if you're gonna do multiple colors, then when it's partially mixed together, you can separate your macaron mixture into different bowls and color it from there. Here I'm starting with a teal color, just still folding my mixture until the batter ribbons off of my spatula. Here I'm doing a figure eight pattern. You can see that everything's starting to meld into one another. It's not coming off quickly and it's not coming off in big hunks. That's what we're looking for. We don't want it too thick or too thin. And as soon as it's ready, we'll spoon it into our piping bag. Now you can find different templates for macarons online. You can find the simple circle. You can find different shapes. A Google search will usually yield exactly what you want and I'll link some things below. So taking your piping bag straight up and down now, I'm just piping out different dollops. Let's do that one more time before we move to the next step. So bring your macronage to ribboning stage. Put it in your piping bag and then holding that piping bag straight up and down, just squeeze and release until your tray is filled. Then we're gonna take that tray and we're gonna bang it a couple of times just to remove any of the air bubbles. If you still have air bubbles, come back with a toothpick or something sharp. This would also be the point where you would wanna add sprinkles or anything to the top to be baked right onto the macarons. Don't put any big sprinkles. Once you're happy with your tray, go ahead and let it sit for approximately 20 minutes just to dry out the macarons. You should be able to drag your finger along the top of the macaron without any batter transferring onto your fingertips. Then if your oven is like mine, you can go ahead and bake your macarons at 260 degrees for 18 to 20 minutes until when you press them, they don't slide. Take your macarons out of the oven and then take the sill pad or parchment, whatever it's sitting on, and gently move that to a cooling rack. Once your macarons are cool, they'll do the work for you by falling off the mat just like this. You can then begin to group them together by size and then put them into an airtight container until they can be filled. Ta-da! All right guys, I hope that gave you the tips and tricks and everything that you need for success. Once you have those shells, guys, go ahead and fill them with whatever kind of buttercream you want. You can use American, Swiss, Italian, flour, German, whatever you want. You can do different ganaches, you can do fruit fillings. However, if you do fruit fillings, sometimes they're a little bit acidic and they can try and eat through your macarons. So I recommend doing like a little shield of chocolate that they cannot penetrate. Macarons can be frozen. However, I don't really do this because they don't even last that long. Just as shells, don't fill them. As for your filled macarons that you're sure that you're gonna be eating, you can go ahead and take those and put them in an airtight container into the fridge to be enjoyed whenever you like. Now, when you are ready to enjoy them, pull them out of the fridge, let them come to room temperature because that's when they are best. You can keep them inside your fridge for about five days or so. When they start getting more on the crunchy side and I'm talking about at room temperature because if you just pull them out of the fridge sometimes they can seem like they're crunchy but when they come back down to room temperature they're absolutely perfect but if they're at room temperature and they're a little bit on the crunchy side they're no longer chewy that's when you know they're done if you have any more questions on the process guys make sure you go ahead and comment your questions down below and remember to always lick the spoon. Except for maybe in this case, because I don't really consider macronage all that particularly pleasing, personally. Hey, hey guys, it's Michelle again. Remember, if you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up as well as click that subscription button as well as the notification bell so that you know whenever I make a new video. Also, everyone's just kind of at home right now. We're all watching TV, taking in content, so help me get some eyes on this.